What's going on smart people? Today we are taking another physics quiz, but not just any old physics quiz, we're taking a history test. Now, I love history. I think it's a fantastic subject. I'm just the worst with things like dates. I, it's in one ear, out the other. So this should be kind of funny. Um, the thing is, is, is physics stuff, physics history quizzes, I think I might be a little bit better at because I, I think I know when big inventions or revolutionary times in physics history happened. So I should more or less be able to derive certain dates if need be. But let's get started with this quiz. The link is in the description so that you can take it in parallel with me. But let's get started. How well do you know the, the history of physics? Question one, in which century do historians generally consider the scientific revolution to have primarily taken place? And right off the bat, I'm in trouble. Um, okay, so 19th, 17th, 18th, or 6th. So 16th through 19th century, 1500s through 1800s. Let's think. So when did cool stuff happen with physics? Well, physics started to become like a real science with Newton. Right, so we got 16th, 1600s, so 17th century. Um, but when you think about it, all right, so then what happened in 1500s? Not much, so it's probably not that one. 1700s, I'm sure there's some stuff that happened, but nothing that's coming to mind, which sort of tells me that that's not it. Because, all right, so I'm thinking it's between 1600s and 1800s. Here's my reasoning Newton goes without saying onto 1800s we have things like Maxwell we got electricity we have electricity coming you know it's towards the end of the 1800s but still so which one is more revolutionary electricity or Newton probably uh, there was probably way more conflict and friction between things like Newton and the church around that time I'm assuming could be completely wrong, but that's the only thing that, that on top of it actually being a real science then, it's got to be Newton. What am I saying? It's got to be Newton. Of course it is, right? Historians differ on the length of the scientific revolution. Some like, and oh, some like Alexandre said 150 years. All right, I don't really care how long it is, but all say 1600, so we're good. We smart. According to legend, Galileo Galilei conducted experiments from the top of which Italian structure? He, uh, we had the pumpkin drop, the thing with SPS last year where people drop pumpkins off of our seven-story building. And I always tell the story about how uh, Galileo dropped the bowling ball and some other small object, I forget what it is now, off of the Leaning Tower. Uh, probably not so leaning back then. Word. Doing good so far. Doing well so far. Yeah, okay, so that is it. But it didn't say what objects. But that's whatever. That's besides the point. The ideas of which philosopher were published by doctors in the medical schools in the mid-17th century. So right off the bat, I would think, like, da Vinci. But that's way off base as far as timing goes. So that's not an answer. No, okay. So he's not listed, obviously. Um... Pushed by doctors. So Isaac Isaac Newton, Francis Bacon, Descartes, and Leibniz. Let's try to establish some time frames here. So Isaac Newton was what? Uh, he was he was an older one. He was like mid to mid sixteen hundreds to early seventeen hundreds. I have no idea about Francis Bacon, so that's that puts me in trouble. I'm also not too sure what he did. There's probably. Uh, if I thought, I could probably remember what Francis. I I'm blanking. Rene Descartes, he was, what, early early 1600s to mid-1600s? And Leibniz was around the same time as Newton, but I know that he was younger, because I don't think they liked each other. Or at least I don't think Newton liked Leibniz. He should probably have, like, this little 20-year-old little, little shit being like, I in invented calculus, too. Mom. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways, which one of these people had their stuff pushed by doctors. I don't think Newton did anything medical. Leibniz, Leibniz was interesting, right? He did a lot of things. So he did the math stuff. He also did try to tackle a lot of business related things. I don't think it's Newton. I don't know who Bacon is, which is really limiting with this. Descartes kind of did a lot as well, right? Um, so I'm torn between Leibniz and Descartes. But 
I'm going to say... I don't know enough about if Descartes did anything with, like, medical stuff. Because, you know, I had to read, like, his meditations, but I don't remember him being like, when I examined the human body that one time. I'm going to say Leibniz, but I'm not very confident. And it wasn't. Starting at this place, uh, Cartesian. Oh, so it was Descartes. Okay. Well, you win some, you lose some. I learned something today. The main royal academies that allowed the ideas and experiments of the scientific revolution to thrive were established in which two cities? That's, yeah, that's Paris and, uh, Paris and London. There we go. I don't know why I know that, but I do know that. I think it's because my, uh, my atomic physics senior thesis advisor is from Dublin, and Dublin, Dublin, and I know that he had to visit, um, both both London and Paris, and I think he might have been the one that brought that up. So I did know that. Cool. Who wrote the 1883 book, The Science of Mechanics, that traced the basis for modern mathematical physics back to Newton? Ernst Mach, Euler, Nietzsche, and uh, Planck. So... <laughs> I feel like everything I don't see I don't see Euler doing a scientific paper. He probably did. And I know that we can attribute so much mathematics to Euler. But for some reason I feel like I would know if he had one called the science of mechanics. So I don't think it's Euler. I definitely don't think it's Nietzsche. He was too busy being sad. And Max Planck maybe, I don't know. Again, it's one of those things where I'm not too sure who Ernst Mach is. Uh, so I'm torn between Mach and Planck just because I know it's not the other two, or I don't think it's the other two. Planck. I also don't, I don't see Planck doing that. But maybe he would. Ugh, that's the thing about history. It's like, maybe they did it that one time. Should I say Mach or Planck? This is what turns... This is what separates the men from the boys. I don't know who you are, but I'm going to pick you. Hell yeah. Knew it the entire time. Always... There was never a time I did not know that. Many historians now disagree with Mach's view of the Enlightenment from a historical perspective and point to the contributions of Leibniz and Euler along with others. Sweet. We so smart. When was the first Solvay conference, the exclusive conference in Brussels that was founded by the industrial Ernst Solvay? Well, let's think. I know Einstein was there. And they have a picture. So let's look at how old Einstein looks. He looks like a young lad. Okay, what do we know about Einstein? He died in 1955. I think he was born in 1879. And why do I know that? Because of that other quiz that we all took. So, 1955... He was getting up there, right? He was pretty old. There he looks young, so let's subtract like 30 years. So I'm thinking around around 1920. That's not an option. Uh, and they're all pretty close. <laughs> but 1917 looks the closest to what I was thinking it would be, so I'm going to go with that one. Wow. 1911. You're telling me that Einstein got to go to the Solvay Conference before publishing General Relativity. That's kind of interesting. So at that time, all he had under his belt really was like the photoelectric effect. Special Relativity was 1905. And then I'm sure he did all that stuff with like Brownian motion. But that's cool because I've seen that picture a bunch of times. And there's that one where they're all like on the chairs. But I, I always thought that he was well established with like the General Relativity part. That's interesting. Cool. Uh, oh, but it has multiple of them. So maybe the one that I'm seeing where he was in the chair, I, I think I, he did look a little bit older. Maybe it was the same one, though. I don't know. Who knows? Who expanded upon the work of Rutherford in 1913 to create the most accurate representation of the atom? I remember it. I mean, obviously, I'm going to pretend to be like, oh, what, which one? It's, it's Bohr. Okay, it's Bohr. Come on, who else could it be? 
I don't know if accurate should be the, the right word, though. I mean, I get that it's, like, energy levels, but it's still, like, a planetary model. I mean, the right way of picturing them is, like, as the, the bubble sort of distribution of probability. But I guess, whatever. Uh, what is now known as the Bohr Planetary Model of the Atom was published in 1913. It was the first iteration of the theory, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Moving along, number eight. When Arnold Sommerfeld declared Einstein's theory of relativity to be one of the most secure bases of contemporary physics, how old was... What? How is this almost one of the last questions of this quiz? How is... How old was the theory when someone said nice about Einstein that one time? Uh, that could be anything. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But we're going to get through this. How old? Also, are they talking about general or special relativity? Because there's a 10-year time gap between that. It's like a Dragon Ball Super episode or something. Um... Yeah, that, that actually a lot hinges on that, right? Because if it's special relativity, I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it took a while, right? It probably took a while for people to start being. It, it's gotta take a while for someone to consider themselves in contemporary physics and then be nostalgic and be like, yeah, that's still a good theory. So, fifteen years. Oh, no, it's saying that it is contemporary. So it could be closer. I'm spending way too much time thinking about this stuff. I'm going to say... We're going to... Mm, nine years. Six... Oh, okay, so it was talking about special relativity. That's weird. So, what is up with these questions that are like 19... It's always before GR. Why does no one care about general relativity? Okay, 19 eleven. sweet. I now know when someone complimented Einstein. What resource was heavily produced in this? How many have I missed so far? I think I've missed a lot. I don't think I'm doing very well. <laughs> what resource was heavily produced in European instrument-making workshops during World War I to assist with the war effort? I know the U.S. did a lot of that, too. They would have, like, sewing companies making like, military equipment. Um... So I'm assuming it would be something military related. Stainless steel, gunpowder, optical glass, rubber tires. You would th I would think. Hmm. I mean, gunpowder. Gunpowder, I, I like, yeah, I want to say it because it's so military related, right? Or, or just, yeah. But I don't think you'd want underqualified people messing around with explosives. So, it's probably not that one. That one's there to trick you. Stainless steel, optical glass, or rubber tires. They've got to be making something that is useful for the war effort. Rubber tires, definitely. Probably. Optical glass. I don't think so. Uh, probably not. Stainless steel, I would think that, it, I mean, you could find, steel is such a commodity, like, yeah, maybe that. I'm going to say stainless steel. Of course it's not. Pre-war, the United Kingdom and the United States had imported most optical glass. That was the answer. What? So you have the U.S. that's like, all right, sewing companies, you are now making tanks. Uh, in the United Kingdom, well... Yeah, we could make military stuff, but I want to be able to see how nice the sky looks. So let's let's make telescopes. Whatever, man. People are wild. But I mean, I get binoculars and stuff, so it makes sense, sort of. That's a weird. That's a weird one. Wouldn't have gotten that one. Which is true about George, Georges, Georges Heen Heen Rye. Perfect, perfect pronunciation there. The Belgian astronomer who came up with the theory that later was known as the Big Bang. Um, 
he was blind, formulated his theory in prison. He was only 20 years old at the time, and he was a Roman Catholic priest. Damn. See, the only thing I knew about him was that he kind of founded the Big Bang. He didn't coin the term, though. That was Hoyle. And I think he coined the term when he was being, like, sarcastic or something. He was blind. No, that's one of those things where it's like, you know that guy was blind, too? So I feel like I would know that. Like, it's one of those things where, it's one of those fun facts where it's like, do you know that the Big Bang Theory is found out by a blind guy? Formulated a theory in prison. Let's see, so he's definitely French. <laughs> French people don't go to jail. Facts. 20 or Roman Catholic priest. People used to get their PhDs at a young age. But, 20 sounds too young. I don't, I don't see anybody messing around, finding out new stuff with Einstein's theory of general relativity at 20. Granted, the guy who, uh, if you guys saw like Simon Clark's video where he did it on, um, what was it, the black, that black hole video? I did not know that that guy found the solution, Schwarzschild, to the Einstein field equations while he was fighting in the war, just in his downtime, his downtime in the trench. That's insane. Anyways, diverging from that, digressing, diverging. Um, I don't think I don't think anyone's doing that at twenty. Prison. I made a joke about I made the joke, but maybe it could be the prison one now because I don't think he was blind. I don't think he was twenty. So it's prison or Catholic priest. That would be wild if it's Catholic priest. That's one of those. Mm, I'm gonna. Let's do it. This is the 10th question. I'm going to go for it. Do it the entire time. Belgian pri Oh, he was not French. That just sounds like a... That was so offensive. I'm so sorry. Anyways. Belgian priest. Uh, observed that the universe was expanding, a theory consistent with Einstein's theory of general relativity. Around the same time, Hubble independently observed that they're moving apart. Fred Hoyle, yeah, that's what I said earlier, coined the term Big Bang. So I know some stuff, I know things, I know weird things as far as history goes. I know who said the, who coined the term Big Bang, I don't know. This one seemed to really be nitpicky about the things that they wanted to ask, like, that whole... Which one complimented Einstein? View results. This is not going to be good. I think I missed like four. Wow. 60. I know every single one of you probably did better than me. And every single one of you is like, how do you think that, that was a French last name? Less than four centuries separate the end of the Renaissance and the theories of Copernicus. Uh, oh, this is just the explanation. That this is a quiz. Cool. I got a 60%. What did you guys get? Let me know in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed the... Oh, I'm supposed to say the comments thing at the end. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I like doing these light things where I get to just do something fun. Do a little quiz that isn't actually just physics questions. I like to do these little silly things. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did hit the quiz in parallel with me, let me know in the comments section how you did. And I'll see you guys there.